Well, it's finally time to pull out that old lawn mower from the garage and get it ready for the next mowing season, and hopefully you kept up with all your maintenance. But is it really that important to do it yearly, or can you get away with a really good service, say, every five or seven years? Honestly, I don't know how to respond to that question, but would you like your mower to last, say, three years or maybe six? If you picked a larger number, then I'd recommend doing a better job of maintaining your mower then. In today's video, we're going to look at this Snapper branded lawnmower, and the problem is that it needs a new pull rope and handle, and it also needs to get caught up on its maintenance to be ready for the next mowing season. Now, if you're the type of person who puts off servicing your mower every year, I can understand why. Maybe you just don't have the time, or perhaps you lack the skills and knowledge, but I'll let you in on a little secret. It's really not that tough to do, and once you've done it once, it's doubtful you forget how to do it the second time. Now, I'm going to try and repair this mower, but yours might be a little different, so this might not work out on yours. If things are not working out for you, like in the video, please ask about it, and I'll be glad to answer your questions. So this mower belongs to a good friend of mine who I've known for quite a long time. They reached out to me to ask me if I could repair their pull rope because their dog was using it as a chew toy. Now, I'm not just going to repair it, only for the dog to break it again, so I've got a plan to deal with it if the dog does happen to get a hold of it. Now, if you didn't see the cleaning video on this mower, well, you missed out on what has to be the dirtiest mower I've ever come across, and that's saying something. Now, I didn't clean everything as you can see. I left the air filter base dirty since I have to take it off to clean it, and I'm going to do that in this part of the video, especially when we figure out if this engine will start and run like my friend said it would. Now, after looking in the fuel tank, of course there would still be fuel in it from last year. Now, I wouldn't recommend leaving fuel in the tank because you risk having carb issues in the springtime, but I guess that's how they like to do it. You'll see here in a minute if that risky move pays off. Of course, I can't use the pull rope to start the mower since it's missing, but there is a way around this issue. We can spin the engine over by turning it with the nut on the flywheel. Now to get at it, we just need to remove the plastic engine cover and then remove the plastic recoil assembly. Once we get to it, we can then use a drill and a large socket to spin the engine over. Now if you do try this, please be careful of your toes. The reason is sometimes you'll have your feet just a bit too close to the mowing deck and of course the blade as well. If you are doing this by yourself, you need to figure out a way to have the brake handle in the down position. Now this is very risky, so don't try it if you're not comfortable doing it. I'd recommend having someone help you by holding down the brake handle while you spin over the engine. Well, surprisingly, it started and ran, and the engine speed seems to be a bit slower than normal, but without a tachometer on it, I won't know for sure. Now, the unsurprising part is that there is a slight knocking sound from the engine. This typically happens when the engine has been ran with low oil for a long time, or when the oil changes have been neglected for a long time. Either way, we're going to start with an oil change, and right off the bat, this is not a good sign. The oil is silver in color, which can only mean one thing. It means there's metal in the oil, and most often it's the aluminum from the connecting rod which makes sense. As the metal wears away from the connecting rod, the oil clearance will also get larger, and by the end, the clearance is so large that as the engine runs, the rod will knock against the journal on the crank. Now to get the rest of the metal out of the engine, I'm going to flush it. Now even if the engine was hot, it's doubtful I would get the heavier metal debris off the bottom of the engine, so that's why we need to flush it. Now, I would not recommend doing this kind of flush very often because it's not a normal thing to do. Now, after doing this kind of flush, I would change the oil in the normal way. As you can see, there was still plenty of metal debris at the bottom of the engine despite getting out the majority of it from the first dumping. Now, I have been known to do this type of flush more than once, but this one looks to have gotten most of it out of the engine. Once we're done with the hard part, we'll jump over to the pull rope. Now, if you didn't catch it, I was being sarcastic about the oil change being all that difficult to do. 
Unfortunately, they were unable to find the original pole handle for the rope, so I'm going to give them this one I had from a different project. Now, any handle will do, and to be honest, this would be a great time to make something more personal for them. Unfortunately, I don't have that sort of time, so this will have to do. So here's the plan concerning the dog. Now, depending upon how the dog chewed on the rope, the majority of it might still be in the recoil. If it is, I'm going to use it. But why do that instead of just replacing the rope? Well, that's the beauty of being cheap, and I'll explain what I mean. So it turns out about 85% of the rope is still left. That means I'm going to use the original rope. Now that does mean the rope is going to be too short in its original configuration of having the pull handle next to the metal handle bar. Instead, I'm going to have the pull handle resting at the recoil. The reason is there's still plenty of rope for a full pull from this new position. The only difference is that you'll have to be standing at the back wheel when starting it instead of behind the mower. And if for some reason they want it back to the original way, I'll put it back to full length. Now I did have two choices on how to rewind the rope, but since I was using the existing rope, I just decided to rewind it. And to make it easier to do that, I used a soldering iron to make a notch in the pulley. The other option was to pull all the rope off the recoil and then wind the spring and then push the broken end back to the opening. Now after getting the handle back on the rope, I'll test the recoil to make sure it's working the way it's supposed to. After that, I'll spray some brake cleaner in the spring area to clean any dirt, oil, or grease out of it. Then I'll spray some lube onto the moving parts to make sure they're working freely. Now you may have seen in my past videos me spraying some lube in the spring area, but if you do that, at least clean the area first with brake cleaner. That way you can flush away all the dirt and grime before you lubricate it. But right now I'm just going to clean the springs with a solvent to flush away the grime and that's it, at least for right now. After confirming that the recoil works like it should, I'll then reinstall it. And since I have some lube on hand, I'm going to use it on the safety switch and the brake cable. Now this is not necessary, but more than likely this has never been done on this mower before. I would like to make a recommendation though, before spraying lube on the moving parts such as the safety switch, try cleaning off the dirt and the old grease from it. Now even though not doing it isn't going to hurt it, cleaning it first will make lubricating it a lot easier. Also if you're having a hard time using the brake handle, it might be that the cable is getting stuck in the outer plastic of the cable. If you think that might be the issue you're having, I would consider just replacing the cable. They are not that expensive and also very easy to replace. After lubricating the brake cable from the top anchor, we can finally move on to the worst looking part on this entire mower. This honestly looks like something off the Titanic. The way the dirt is collected on it is so excessive, it simply can't be real. Now, I'm going to spare you from having to watch me try to clean this thing, but I will let you know that it was a lot worse than I thought. There seems to be oil or gasoline on the plastic, which is why the dirt clumped on it the way that it did. I suspect the car may have been the cause for the leak, but I haven't seen a drop of gasoline from it since I've cleaned it. Now I probably should have used my shop vac for the car, but a quick wipe down will do for right now. I'm sure I'm going to get a few comments about making it worse by pushing some of the dirt into the carb, but to be honest, it's already ingested plenty of dirt already, so a little bit more isn't going to hurt it. After I've done the best I can, in the time I've got with it, I'll then replace the air filter base and then install the new air filter. Now these are not very expensive, so if yours is even partially clogged, it could be causing your engine to use more fuel than it needs to. So a $7 filter could pay for itself in one summer of mowing. Now if you need one of these filters for your mower, there should be a link in the description. Unfortunately, as far as I'm aware, there is no way to clean these, but if I do find a way, I'll let you know about it. The next item on the list is not too important, but it's so easy to do, it's worth doing. What I'm going to do is to lubricate the wheels. Now there are two reasons you need to do this. The first is to keep the wheels from wearing and causing them to wobble in the future, and the other reason is to make it easier to use your mower. Now making the wheels easier to spin will put less load on the drive system which means you'll have more power available for the blade. If you should happen to have just a push mower it means you won't have to push as hard to get the mower to move across the yard. Like I said it's so easy to do this there's simply no reason not to. Of course this mower is front wheel drive so it suffers from traction issues but lubricating the wheels will also help them out. If you want to remove the wheels to lube them that works too but it's not necessary. If I get a chance, I might have to measure just how much easier it is to move the mower after lubricating the wheels. Now, are you going to save $100 a year in gasoline from lubricating the wheels? Probably not, but making it easier to push just might save you from overexerting yourself on a hot summer day. The next item is probably the one I would do more often than once a year because it has the most impact on your engine. I'm, of course, talking about sharpening your blade. 
Now, if you really wanted to make mowing your grass a lot easier and to save the most money on gasoline, I'd definitely invest time into sharpening your blade. Since the blade is directly bolted to your engine, it will have the most impact on how it runs. If the blade is dull, your engine is going to struggle to cut the grass, but if it's sharp, it won't have to work as hard. Now, there is a good way of sharpening it, and there's a better way. It really doesn't matter which one you choose because a somewhat sharpened blade will be better than a dull one. The last thing I want to mention is something that gets overlooked most often or is looked upon as the most mundane item, and that's of course putting oil into your engine. So how is this overlooked? Most consumers don't know how to do this part correctly, which is quite shameful. All you have to do is pour some oil into the engine and check if it's low or full and add more if you need to. But most times, only some oil is added to the engine without ever checking it, or the other issue is that the consumer will pour the entire bottle into the engine and yet again without ever checking it. It's as though the correct amount of oil is so trivial and unimportant. Now the engine won't break during the first year of mowing if you didn't add enough oil, but it's doubtful it'll last the second year. The funny thing is, I think most consumers know this fact but are unaware of it. So, to combat the risk of losing the engine too soon, most will knowingly put in too much oil, and although too much oil is just as bad as too little, I guess if I had to choose, I'd probably pick to add more oil than not enough as well. So here's a tip, take your time and do it right the first time, and it will pay off in the end. Well, it was kind of a shaky start there. It took quite a few pulls to get it to start, but after a few more starts like that, it's now starting a whole lot better. Now, you could put the pull rope back on the holder on the handlebar, but it's going to be about two feet shorter than it needs to be, so you'll risk breaking the rope if you're not careful, but at least you won't have to worry about the dog breaking it anymore. But to be honest, if the dog didn't break the rope, more than likely they would have kept using the mower without the air filter all the way until the day the compression finally got low enough that the engine wouldn't start. So if you think about it, the dog did them a favor. Hopefully after this last service call, they'll take better care of their mower. And who knows, it might still be around when the kids finally leave the nest, although I wouldn't count on it. Now, taking care of a lawnmower isn't all that tough. Yes, you have to keep an eye or even an ear on it, but if you do, you might not have to buy a mower quite so often. Now, I don't want to talk about battery mowers in this video, but I do want to mention that there are care instructions for the mower and the batteries as well, so don't think you're just going to skip the maintenance if you decide to switch over to batteries. So my question is, have you ever skipped the maintenance on your mower for any reason? Maybe you had a medical issue, or maybe you just forgot. I hate to say it, but sometimes life has other plans for you other than taking care of a lawnmower, blower, or trimmer. I will admit it as much as I would like to say that I'm on top of my maintenance, sometimes it just doesn't happen. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects. And I hope to see you in the next video.